Okay, let's put it all this together and, and um, talk about what I'm doing. I, I could go on and on about um, my clients and stuff, but someone once told me, well, Al, we want to see what you're doing. So this was in, oh gosh, 2016 or so. I was in St. Louis. I was, I was talking about um, extended stay rentals. I saw this on Airbnb that this had a place for Airbnb inside of this warehouse in St. Louis. So I, I took an Uber way out there and I stayed in this place. You know, it's all beat up warehouse. There's like miles and miles of these warehouses that are just abandoned in St. Louis. Yeah, out there, um, industrial area. But this guy had a thriving Airbnb inside. Looked like this. He he cleaned it all up. He put artwork in there, and he was using it for bachelor and bachelorette parties on the weekends. And then he would do uh, week long stays during the week. But he had a really well laid out business. He had a little bar at the bottom. His his business encouraged a, a burger place to come set up down the street. He was influencing the whole economy of this abandoned industrial zone. And he bought this whole thing and piecing his numbers together. He's a, he's a realtor. He lives on the top of this and rents each floor out. He rents by the bid, um, by the floor. And he makes a half a million dollars of uh, revenue. A bachelor, bachelorette parties on the weekends. And, and of course, he doesn't have to pay anything for himself. <laughs> so I'm like, he's using his short-term rental to re revitalize this area because they're, they're kind of converting over to condos now because structure sound, but and, uh, just changing the use of the building was so amazing. Look at this. He's got um, open, open rafters. And so he just reimagined this. So I said, I can do this too. So, Years later, 2020, 2019, through a couple of steps, easy corporate housing, had enough cash flow to purchase this whole building, which is in this whole block that's in Sacramento. It's in a great spot, but the building is ugly, ugly, ugly. It's the ugliest place on the block in, uh, in this um, up and coming business, business boulevard in Sacramento, California. So we worked with the architect and we came up with it, you know, it's going to transform it into this with uh, furnished housing all the way around. That was the plan. Um, basically a, a little extended stay America. <laughs> so I was going to do my own. So COVID hit and we had the pivot. So I got a couple of units built out. I wasn't able to go through my full plan because lending institutions are not looking favorably on the hospitality industry right now because when when marriott has to close its doors in some areas and hilton goes down to five percent occupancy and everyone plummets except for stand to stay america lenders don't want anything to do with it especially during COVID 19 so so i started out of the building cleaning it up and and look i got open rafters it used to look like this this particular uh, one room see this low ceiling here i stripped off all the sheetrock and i looked up and when I was looking up, I was like, oh, man, this has got some beams up there that look beautiful. Let's take this whole ceiling down and open it up, lift the, lift the cap on it. So we eventually got all the, um, the roaches and stuff out of here. <laughs> it was pretty disgusting, really, really disgusting. You can see the low ceilings. And we're just reimagining what was possible. And again, I had this previous experience, so I was already knew, oh, yeah, I can use my imagination. So this is what it looks like now. We lifted the ceiling, got a designer. Remember I talked to you guys about before, if you have, you leverage people's assets. I, I can't pick colors, but um, I have a, a designer friend. You gotta get, a, get the right person who, who's, that's their skill set, that's their asset, that's their superpower, and pay them to do things for you and you can get far better results. So we're very pleased um, what we got here. All this paid for with arbitrage income. That's why I'm piecing this together for you guys. Use your rental arbitrage. Even though you're a landlord, you got to do rental arbitrage. It frees you up to do so many more things. Okay. 
don't use your own money. You don't need your own money if you have courage and a good idea. What do you guys think of this? That's beautiful. Very clean. <laughs> yeah. It, it rents up before there's a constant demand, a backlog of people wanting it. Mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why I design her. Okay. Is it a studio? Or? It's a studio, yeah. That's nice. It's competing right against a hotel yeah. for less yeah. in, the, in the coolest part of town, but the ugliest building. I'll pay for it without my money, okay, by, by creating these arbitrages and, and, then, and then leveraging other people's superpowers to do things well. I wrote this book called 40 Ways to Increase the Net Income in Rental Property. This is 12 categories that I say you can find income streams in, okay? You see hospitality, that's what I'm working in now. It's just one way to increase your net income of your property. Also, there's storage. So this is the back part of the building. It was just all papered up and everything. And it didn't have enough electricity. This building doesn't have enough electricity to, to, to power all these units. It only has enough for four residential uh, spaces. So I was like, oh, I can't do anything with this back of this building. And I was just waiting. I was going to convert them to furnished rentals, but I have to, the city's making me put in this $150,000 transformer um, before I can build onto it. So I said, let's go with storage because storage doesn't require any power. This is another view of the building. So there we go. I, <laughs> I put some siding, I put some roll-up doors, and I created a storage facility inside of that. Again, it's net income, right? So if I can rent it out for a dollar a square foot, that's what storage units do. That's exactly what I did. And if you look here, so I leave it open so I can um, eventually blow colder air, temperature control it. See, I just put a dividing wall and I just put walls up and roll up doors. You can see right here the battery. I'm using a, a solar panel to, to charge this battery, keep it charged up. And then the battery charges the lights. Then I use my marketing techniques, same marketing techniques I use for furnished rentals. I create a little, um, a, a little one-page website, and then I, I start marketing that around, kind of showing off the area and answering questions. That's really important. That's an important marketing technique. But I create these one-page websites for all of my units. That's how we. That's how we do it. So I turn nothing, empty places into. Uh, I need to update this, a dollar square foot, so they're 400 square feet and 460 square feet into a monthly income. I, there's an, another unit. I got four of these units now. I need to update this. But I turned it into over $1,000 a month where it's just not doing anything at all. And how do people can come in there? They turn on the lights. How do they turn on lights when there's no power, right? Is they use the battery. The battery charges it like a flashlight. RVs, you know, RV vehicles, they can all run, the whole thing runs off of solar and batteries. So that technology is already there. I just incorporated that into the building. So I got lights and storage and almost the same profit margin, the same net income as what I would have had as uh, furnished rentals. So you guys getting what I'm saying with you? I'm sharing with you that if you keep your mind open, you learn how to market, you learn how to make net income, you focus on making net income, you can do some powerful things. You become this golden goose. Another way, another technique that talks about in the book is ad agency. And people always laughed at me. Uh, all the stuff in 2015, you see reviews, people saying, oh, Al's ideas are, are good, but they're not practical. So I said, okay, let me show you. So this is the front of the building. This is on the, the busy uh, commercial side. So I said, why don't I sell advertisement on the windows? That's, that was one of my ideas back in 2015. So I had a uh, artist come and paint that, advertise here, phone number. And I uh, said, why don't I rent these panels out per month, each window, like a small billboard? Because I have the, the traffic count. And people, when I put this up, people were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I was going to advertise right there. Here we go our first few ads, and we have um, up to three so far. There's another one, this guy's for, he takes selfies for his business. That's a terrible picture, I gotta fix that. But each one of these panels is, is $100 per month per panel. So you see I created $300 per month right there. 
but I have the opportunity to create um, more than that, right? I can create one, two, three, four, five, six on this side. I can create a $600 per month income stream off of that. And that's kind of going back to our, Carol, we, we did a, um, our example, it was like, we said $700 was pretty good. Right. So $600 per month off, off of just Windows, it's not bad, right? No, it's good. Yeah, the same techniques. Now people need storage just like they need furnished rentals because it's the mobile workforce. But I have storage and um, housing in the same building. So if you're relocating, you often find a mini storage and a place to live, right? Now you have it the same space. Power plant, you know, that's, you see my, um, I got this from, I was trying to figure out solar because I didn't know anything about it. And I went to my Facebook group. People walked me through it on my private Facebook group. Exactly what they get. I got these panels and they charge the, uh, a marine battery. It looks like a car battery, but it's a little different. And that powers the, the, um, the, the uh, light bulbs I have. So people who are doing storage, they just want to turn the lights on, put their stuff in there and leave, right? That's all I need. So here's the conceptual model of it. Furnish rentals on top. Remember, I only have power for four rentals or I had to buy that transformer, that $150,000 transformer. So I do storage on the bottom and sell advertising on the side. And here's the funny thing. You guys ready for this? I was going to do all furnished rentals before and, and uh, borrow quite a bit of the money, still make a, a nice margin because I'm focusing on the margin. What I'm doing now because of coronavirus is a little more profitable than all of it on the bottom line. There's a solar plant. Again, solar powering. Solar is off the shelf now. I can get enough solar to, to power my, my um, downstairs building. So things are always changing. You got to always stay um, looking at, at what things are, not what it was. That's my, I want to leave you guys with that. So you go, you see how, I wrote this in 2015. You can see how I'm using four of the 12 uh, right now. That's how you use the book. <laughs> you um, use it to help you find ideas. And you use this inside of your, your furnished rentals as well. Because unlike a regular rental, you have opportunities to advertise inside of your furnished rentals, coupons to restaurants and different things. Uh, people who are traveling to your, your furnished rentals need storage, so on and so forth. There's all kinds of, and since you are paying for the electricity at your furnished rentals, then um, solar, there's opportunities to reduce your costs by using solar, um, different things like that. Transportation hubs, you can include a car, a rental car, because people come from out of town, they rent cars and they need furnished rentals. You guys see how this stacks together? And, and further increasing your profit margins. That's what it's all about. So you don't need so many traditional rentals. I need a lot of traditional rentals to come up with the same net income I have with a handful of uh, extended stay rentals with all these other profit centers built into it. Is that good? You guys like that? Yeah. Wow. Yes. Okay, I wanted to bring it all together for you. So here we go again. You don't need money to do all this stuff, to accomplish your goals, to uh, retire Lisa, to move Carol further along. And um, you need courage. And, and you need a community of, of people to help you brainstorm. That helps you, that helps you get there. And, and of course, I, I'm trying to, I'm showing you this, not really to brag about it, but to kind of qualify myself as your coach to help you along as I um, definitely can.